Morning, Mike. Morning, Teresa. Uh, have you had a chance to look at the film? And if so, uh, what did maybe Dobbs do that may have impressed you more than what you thought originally during the game? Well, I think there was some opera. You know, I mean, a guy that has just been here pretty much just the eight or nine days, you know, week and a half, just the operation, the understanding, um, you know, got us into some good plays, you know, made some mistakes, you know, like to have a few of those back. Uh, I thought he invested in some cl completions, you know, was able to get the ball out of his hand. Um, and I thought he was, you know, made some really good throws on third down. Um, you know, we had the uh, situation there at the end of the end of the half, you know, which is good to be able to to get that ball over there to Traylon uh, and get us some points there before the end of the half. So, um, you know, a lot of positives, a lot of things that we'll have to improve on and, you know, see where we go next week. Mike, what, what kind of goes into that decision as you evaluate both quarterbacks? Well, I mean, I think in the end, it's it's, it's the same at every. Who gives you the best chance to to win? To win one game, you know that that's where we're at. That's the only thing that matters is is winning one game, um, getting healthy, getting rested, getting recovered, and then winning one game and finding out who's going to do that. And and they probably both will at some point in time. Wyatt, can you take us back through the process of the decision to to sign Josh sight unseen off of a practice squad uh, at the quarterback position? Because you know there's not a lot of game film on him from regular season. And what what made him worth the risk? Well, I mean, I think you're just trying to evaluate what what you know, when Ryan's unavailable uh, at that point in time and now going forward. Um, what, what the what the vision that you have for the position? What how do you think you, you can uh, have somebody come in here and learn and work with. Uh, you know, went through a bunch of names, went through a bunch of conversations, and you know that's that's who we ended up with. And you know, excited that he's here. And you know, I thought he took advantage of his his opportunity. And you know, we'll see where that leads. Did anybody on the staff, scouting wise or coaching staff, have any prior connection to him to kind of give you some insight on it? Uh, I don't think any. You know, nobody coached him per se. I think just. You know, the evaluations that we've had from him in the past and kind of what he's done and his ability to, you know, you know he had some you know, veteran presence, not a whole lot of, um, you know, game experience, but, but certainly um, has been around and been in this league and, you know, is prepared. And, and that was something that was, was evident from an early point in time when he got here. With, with the production and the decisiveness we saw last night, what, what makes the decision tough? Uh, you know, I just want to make sure that we're, you know, that every decision that we make, we want to try to put some thought into and make sure that it's thought out. And, you know, we'll see what goes after this weekend. As far as that decision going into uh, yesterday, like, how much was it something that you, you may not have gotten from Malik Willis as opposed to just wanting to get Dobbs out there to see what you, you... It was pretty much everything, you know, just make a decision and go from there. How much did... Uh downfield element in the, in the passing game help last night? How important was it to get some downfield shots? Well, I mean, it was, you know, huge for, for to be able to move the ball down the field and have Racy come down with it. And, you know, going to need to see some other guys that can go and, you know, make some plays or whether it's the, the catch and runs. We've seen those, uh, our ability to execute some of those plays that to get guys to the second level. Uh, Julius had a nice one of those. And, you know, we'll continue to try to throw the ball down the field. We have to connect. You know, I thought Traylon did his best to adjust to that ball. I think that there's some really cool things there. And fortunately, felt like the guy grabbed his left arm and, you know, he wasn't able to catch it. But for him to come back and, you know, not fall, not run out of bounds, you know, I thought he was in a great position to adjust to that ball. You know, we just need, you know, more of those. Where you, I guess with the drops and what what has to happen there, other guys just simply catching the ball. You know? Guys simply just have to catch the ball. I mean, I don't know. We had nine, 19 jugs machines, and everybody catches them on the jugs. You just, you know, when you go out there, you only get one opportunity sometimes, and you have to hit it. And it's the same with situations on defense. You know, when a play is needed to be made, uh, you know, to win, you have to make them. How much did the approach maybe of this week and, and having now a weekend to rest uh, help get this team a little bit healthier for this final game? Well, I mean, it should. You know, it should. And, it, again, I have a, a lot of appreciation for the way that everybody uh, handled last week. I know it was um, different and unique, but it was the situation. 
And again, we can't avoid distractions. The only thing we can do is, is how we handle them. I, I thought everybody was prepared. I thought they played hard, not without mistake. I thought we beat ourselves too many times to win the football game. But you know, I thought guys were ready to go. I thought they you know, executed at times. You know, looked like exactly like we would we needed to do to win. Just unfortunate that it wasn't consistent enough, and we made too many mistakes. How crowded is the training room during a weekend off? Well, I mean, I think that the guys that need the treatment will be there. I mean, it's you know, it, there's nothing more important than the health of the team. And if you can't play and you don't play, um, you know, you're expected to be in there in treatment. And I'm sure there'll be a, a, a big group because uh, everybody. You know they want to feel better. They don't want to. They don't want to not feel well going into the biggest week of the season. So when you do get some of the kind of the big names back that, that rested the other night, how much of a psychological lift does that provide too? Uh, I mean, I think it can. I mean, I think you know again, this is it's about going out and performing. So the players that that go out there uh, have to perform and have to do their job. And have to do their job well, not just show up and, and walk out there. That won't be enough. David Long uh, would be eligible to return uh, after four weeks. Uh, is there a chance he could get activated into his window this week? Yeah, we better get, get to it here before too long. So hopeful that maybe he does and you know he can try to see if he can help us through a week of practice. You got any, any indication from the league on when you'll play? And I guess you got a, your schedule will be dictated by whether it's Saturday or Sunday. Yeah, I would imagine that that's going to go through Monday night. So based on however that Monday night game goes, we'll be we'll be ready to play whenever they want us to play. Is it kind of a, I guess it's a big decision. You only have the one IR remaining. You know, is it, is it certainly you know if, assuming David Long is ready to go, is it he's the guy? Yeah, I mean I think you're kind of running out of running out of options. I, mean, I would say like. Land, if you're talking about Harold Landry, yeah, he's not going to be coming back. What, what, uh, about the, the, the challenge with Jacksonville? Second. Why are they laughing at you, John? I mean, <laughs> I'm laughing at you. <laughs> <laughs> just that's the question. I feel like. What is the challenge, Mike? I guess I guess Jacksonville second time around, you know, based on what you saw. Well, the challenge is just try to do this some of the things that we did really well, which was, you know, have nine ex explosive gains on offense, move the football, not turn it over, not, not make some very, you know, critical mistakes in, in the way that we handled the football, not give up X plays, not, not allow them to catch short gains that turn into 20 or 30 yards, catching runs. I mean, if they beat you, they beat you, but not beating ourselves, you know, trying to, to affect the quarterback. And again, that's by getting there, forcing them off the spot. That's by tipping passes. That's like you know, doing some of those things a little bit better, um, you know, and making sure that we're not beating ourselves. That There's a lot of good things from that tape. It's a close football game. I mean, we're winning a football game on their side of the 50, and we you know, turn it over, gain another first down on an X play into the red zone, turn it over. You know, then we're backed up. You know, don't execute a blocking assignment. The quarterback gets the ball stripped out. And defensively, we give up a third and two for a catch and run touchdown. A lot of those things that just really not making them earn it. You know, we're just making mistakes there. And if they earn it and they beat us, then that's what they do. Some of you guys that were unavailable last night and other guys maybe that were not completely familiar with what's going on, how much do you appreciate the way Kevin Byard played last night? Thanked him countless times for his leadership throughout the week, uh, his performance. You know, again, we need you know our best players to play good for us to win, and you know it was a winning performance. You know, just you know his ball production. I thought he tackled well. I thought he communicated, and and, and again gave us a, a presence there, not only in the game but throughout the week. When, when you look at this, you know this six-game streak that you have uh, of losing, like how tough is it to? to flip that switch and, and go out there and do what you have to do, you know, this upcoming week against Jacksonville? Well, I mean, I think you've, you know, we've been through this, whether you win six or lose six, it doesn't matter really what you did last week. It's not going to matter what you did yesterday. We just have to play better. And, uh, you know, we've seen it happen in this league 
numerous times throughout the year, throughout this season, last season. You know, there's only one game that matters, and that's this one. Any chance the Raven or Zach could get into the mix for left tackle for the finale? Um, I think we'll look at everything, but you know, I just I think we see a lot of things differently. So we'll continue to try to, you know, give ourselves the best chance to succeed. And, you know, just I think we all kind of just have to make sure we understand what we're looking at when we look at it. And uh, no, no, nobody's blocking perfectly. Nobody's running the ball. Nobody's throwing it perfectly. But, you know, we're just trying to make sure we get the guys in the right place. How much, uh, I know the pass pressure wasn't great, but with Trey and Roger, is there technique breakdown that's, that's hurting them in the end? Well, technique, I don't know. Grab the guy around the waist, down the field, that's, I, we're not coaching that technique. I think Roger's an aggressive player, and I think he'll start to get some of those calls. We just need, you know, Maybe our receivers start getting some of those calls where, you know, we throw our hands up and I don't know. But yeah, I mean, we can't, you know, we got a challenge down the field. Roger did at, at times, they tried him down the sideline. Um, you know, he had the guy covered on the side. I think he just he was an aggressive player. Trey, I, I, don't, I don't have an answer for you, Paul, I don't. Andrew Adams, uh, how much did you appreciate how he came in here? Well, I mean, he did just come in here from, from another team and learn the system uh, really quickly, played a bunch of positions for us, uh, had some production, um, played, played through a lot of pain and bumps and bruises and wrist and this and that. And, you know, it meant something to him. It meant a lot to him to have this opportunity. And, uh, you know, disappointed that he won't be uh, he won't be able to help us here going forward. But you know, we'll see think where things go in the future. But you know, he did everything that we asked him to, and I think he did everything that he could do to take advantage of his opportunity. Coach, what's the message to the team this week? Um, you know, we'll kind of stew on it a little bit, but you know, we'll get these guys back. We'll get them rested. You know, I think just looking at it right now, that everything that happened, everything that Everybody's saying the, the good, the bad, none of it matters. You know, the only thing that matters is, is how prepared we are, how, how ready we are to go down there to execute, uh, and then ultimately how we perform on game day you know, with a lot on the line. How will it affect your uh, practice schedule and all once the league decides if you're playing Saturday or Sunday? Uh, if it's Saturday, then we'll make Tuesday or Wednesday. And if it's Sunday, Wednesday gets to stay a Wednesday. Performance that were, were there some holes that he could have hit, or did he get do a you know pretty solid job in his first start there? Um, I wouldn't say there was a you know, ton of room. I thought the best run was being physical. Um, so yeah, there's some things we have to block better and make some more and make some guys miss and go from there. But yeah, I mean, I just think there was some pressure and movement and things that we have to get cleaned up, uh, kind of get into the rhythm of the run game. That's something that we have to be able to do, whether it's you know, zone scheme or gap scheme, um, you know, getting some of those things going.